Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is the secret show, but do not, under any circumstances, tell anyone. It's episode number 246, and I'm Patricia Steer, and Mark Sargent joins me. Oh, is that my cue? <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to say something witty. Oh, something witty? Um, I already used that. I already used that. Uh, my doctor says the electroshock treatments are working. All right. I don't know if that was witty or topical, but we'll take it. Well, you know. <laughs> well, uh, we haven't done a secret show for a week. Uh, gosh, I have so much stuff going on in my personal life. Lots of things I've needed to take care of. Sure. And a lot of the things I've needed to take care of are all going to culminate uh, in August. Well, this is the 1st of August 2018 right now. But we've got a lot of things we're going to talk about that are that are coming up that involve you and myself and many other flat earthers right so i don't even know where we should begin should we talk about all the exciting things coming up or should we touch on um buzz aldrin let's touch on the stuff that's coming yeah very, very fun stuff <laughs> well i mean it's stuff that's going to happen i mean the buzz thing we can talk about that whenever but right, right. the the topical stuff or I should say the most current stuff is, is you know, we're talking 48 hours from now. Exactly. So uh, what do you want to talk about first? L.A.? Well, yeah, let's talk about L.A. In 48 hours from right now, I'm getting on a plane in Houston, Texas, and you're getting on a ferry uh, in Whitby Island, heading to Seattle and getting on a plane, and we're meeting up in Los Angeles, and uh, there's a big Flat Earth meetup happening. Um, a lot of Flat Earthers are going to be there, and we've already talked about a team of people that are also going to be there to film it. And right. I'll let you take it from here. Okay. So uh, Friday, if you haven't already seen it, Friday we are going to have a meetup in Pasadena, California. And it is going to be you and me and DITRH is flying in from the East Coast. He's going to be on a whirlwind tour because he's only staying for one night. <laughs> one night. One night only. Limited engagement. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, DITRH is a limited engagement. And we're going to be meeting at a park just north of Pasadena. And I know some people say it's Altadena. It's like, have you ever heard of Altadena? No. Are there you know, hotels in Altadena? No. Okay. Then we're going to call it Pasadena because it's as close as anything. So Little we're old lady, lady from Altadena just doesn't have the same reason. No. No, it doesn't. It does. It absolutely does not. So we're going to be going there and we're going to be coming into John Wayne down in Irvine and we are going to be meeting up with Orange County Airport. Orange County Airport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to be uh, meeting up with the a, real housewives of Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tease me. That would be so much fun. Uh, yeah, no, we're going right. to be meeting Count up me with out. I suddenly feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be meet up with, we, we can say this now, that's fine, because we should, probably should clarify a few things. So we're going to be meeting up we, with Shane We've alluded Dawson. to it in past shows. Yeah, but but I, what I really don't want, first off, I do not want any younger people, the fact that I'm saying younger people really scares me, uh, any younger people assuming that Shane Dawson is going to be at this you thing. You mean people below the age of using mobility scooters like us? <laughs> what is that? Hey, my, <laughs> hang on, this, head, this headset's broken. I know it. <laughs> I'm hearing tones. Anyway, so the bells, the bells. So uh, I, I can, I am not going to say ever that Shane Dawson is going to be attending this event. Would it be nice if he was? Yes, it would. Do I want a thousand teenage kids showing up from the greater Los Angeles area? No, I do not. Hey, why not? They would learn about Flat Earth. I think that'd be great. Uh, no, no, no. Logistically, it would be a problem. Oh, true. I mean, we're, you know, meetups can only get so big and then all of a sudden it gets to a certain size and they call the cops. Well, Shane Dawson's brother, Jaron, is going to be there and Jaren. he's the one that was on the Shane Dawson video on the channel, Shane, exactly. that uh, talked about uh, conspiracies and the best part of the whole video was when he talked about Flat Earth and how many hits has that got now on YouTube? My gosh. 15 million. Yes, it's That's a awakened lot. a lot of people because uh, Jaron, Shane Dawson's brother, is very well aware of Jared. Flat Earth. Oh, J Jared. J sorry. I'm sorry, J E R. And he spelled mm -hmm. I, No, no, no. It's a, it's a, I'm it's so used honest... to saying Jaron, Jaron Campanella, or, you know, Jaron, Cammy, and Bob's son that I just defer to it. It is an honest mistake. And the um, it's spelled J E R I D. Mm -hmm. 
and we've been in contact with him and the you know the big reason why we're going down there is like look he's he that particular video really scored a demographic for us that we didn't even know well i mean let's face it well i've gone to a bunch of meetups you don't see a lot of 12 to 19 year olds at the meetups but now we might but is, there are people who've seen that video that are over the age of 80 like alan oh, yeah. alda <laughs> alan alda who watched so, the video i'm not going to say exactly how we know this but he he watched that video and then he went on the view and spoke about it mm -hmm. didn't, didn't call it out by name but said that he watched a particular video and was very interested in the people so we have casually put out an invite to ellen and if you're over a certain age, what, what, what age would you have to be over? Like 40? Yeah, probably. 30, 35, 35, 40. If you don't know who Alan Alda is, he was Captain Pierce, otherwise known as Hawkeye, mm -hmm. from the television series MASH, which was one of the greatest television shows of all time, ranked up way up there. And it still holds a record for the most views of a television show ever. So its final episode, it scored an un it, an unheard of number. It scored like a seventy seven share, which meant that what was it three quarters of Americans were watching it that evening. And of course, it's a lot easier to say that now because there was no internet, not by a long shot, and you know you had radio and you had television. But it was amazing, and it made popular the song "Suicide Is Painless." But right. most of us don't know it by that title. But that is the theme song title for the TV show Mash. And oh, you really? You're gonna try to out trivia me? All right, and yeah, I'm doing yeah. this. Yeah, what without, you got? What you got? Bring I'm, it. I'm doing this without a net. <laughs> uh, the original, yeah, that the su the suicide song actually had its lyrics in it. I mean, remember, because the Mash series, they just played the melody without the lyrics. the The original song was in the Mash movie mm. from 1970, where Captain Pierce was originally played by. That I don't know. Donald Sutherland. Oh, wow. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. And there were a few people from that movie, including Radar, who carried over from the movie to the television series. Hmm. Very interesting. And anyway, Alan won several enemy, eh, enemies, <laughs> se several Emmys for the role and did very, very well. And the series did very, very well. And uh, I was very happy. And so he could basically just, he basically, after that series was over, he could just coast into right. any cameo he wanted. And he did. Yeah. When I was uh, growing up, my parents watched MASH. I really didn't, but I could remember being in bed and hearing um, the, the song, the MASH theme song, and it always made me feel depressed because I knew the movie was about war and death and killing, although it was Whoa. a comedy, but it just always made me feel sad. So even if Whoa. I hear it now, it's, oh, it's a downer. It, well, it is a sad, I mean, it's a, it's a sad melody because it's a sad song. I mean, there's yes, literally yes. suicide in the title of the song. And suicide and, being painless, I mean, none of us here are able to actually confirm or deny that. Right. So, exactly. think about it. Think I'm, about it, kids. <laughs> anyway, do I think he will show up? I, I would bet against it. But no. at the same time, weirder things have happened. It'd be great if he could, because if you listen to him on The View, he does sound very sincere that he wants to talk to flat earthers and, and see what everything's about. And so if we get a chance to run into him, great, fantastic. He's got nothing left to lose. No, he doesn't have anything to lose. Why? Great why legacy, not? successful career. He wasn't yeah. tapped in the whole Me Too thing. So um, his reputation's not been tarnished. Yeah. And and he's been going on television shows recently, going his legacy. He wants it to be like that he's kind of a, um, a great communicator. You know, a great listener he wants to understand, you know, he wants to learn all the way to the end. Uh, and so the fact that he was single out flat earth on the view says something to me. Isn't it true, though? Don't you want to learn to the very end? I mean, that's what life's all about and love. But but learning even even on my death. And I've said this on other shows before. I hope I'm completely conscious and aware of what's happening to me. So when that journey starts, I can experience it in all of its, I guess, beauty. And I hope I, I'm there as well with my hands around your neck. <laughs> Remember that, people. Got a time stamp on this video, just like with the Tiger Man on episode 13 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. <laughs> this might be used as evidence in court. The f yeah, the first lady of Flat Earth was strangled. <laughs> By who? Wait, let's harken back to episode 246. 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, so anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I hope that we have a, a great turnout. I encourage anybody in the Los Angeles area to come. To, if you don't know exactly where it is, it's going to be at a park just north of Pasadena. You can look up the details. Go to it, YouTube. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Pasadena. I've already made three promos for this thing. And so nobody has any excuse. Oh, I didn't hear about it. No, no. I will put a link in the description box of this video to one of your videos that's got the address. Cool. Cool. And uh, Netta is still the point of contact out there, uh, mm -hmm. although I don't think she is going to be showing up, but everybody else is. Her significant other is heavily pregnant with child, so right. a lot of stuff going on in her life. But hello, right. Netta. She's a good person and a Facebook friend of mine. And for those in the LA area, you know her. And if not, well, then you don't. But she's definitely um, hardcore in this flat earth thing. So yeah, we're doing that. Uh, we're going to do the meetup. And we're going to hang out with the DITRH. And at some point, we are going to break off and uh, go to, um, it's, it's not a planetarium. It is a uh, Griffith, uh, Griffith, Griffith, uh, Griffith, Griffith Observatory. observatory. Yes. But I think we're doing that before the meetup on Friday. Really? Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's and one then... of the things we're doing. And uh, Jared, I had to think. I had to rethink what his name was. Jared, Jared. Uh, Shane Dawson's brother is bringing a film crew and is going to film yeah. that. And I don't know what he's going to film us doing there, but probably he'll be asking us questions about flat Earth and offering his own ideas. I honestly don't think it's going to be. You know, we we tend to repeat ourselves. We're redundant. We say the same things over and over. We it's probably going to be the same as Los or as NASA in Houston. Jared. In the observatory with the rifle, maybe that. <laughs> no, you're thinking the clock tower. Yes. Uh, Boy, no. this has been a violent show thus far. We better, we better it, chill out. Yeah, yeah, we're suicide yeah. is painless. You're going to strangle me, and then, you know, then Jared. So, the let's um, talk about peace and happiness. Now, peace and happiness. <laughs> we are also going to be going with him and doing a segment at the same studio that they shot the video. That'll be interesting. We, yeah, down. Uh, I think we're they're going to pull in some people because we're doing it on a Saturday to see a real YouTuber studio as opposed yeah, real, to yeah, real. Yeah, YouTubers mine. got some money. <laughs> you get your own studio. Well, it also helps. Look, it, let's face it. If you're in Los Angeles, there's plenty right. of studio spaces out there that people. Well, are, I've been in yours, the room you're in right now, and right. you've been here in mine, and right. uh, that they're not much to write home about. Nope. <laughs> This nope, is that's a size. fine, you that's a fine a, vinyl banner back here. Yeah. That's not CGI, folks. You could put a single bed in this room and be you couldn't even get like a double bed in here. It's, it looks big. In previous videos, I've stood way back there, but it's not. It's just an optical illusion. So It is. Well, it's not even an illusion. It's just perspective. Mm, perspective, yes. Perspective, right. So anyway, that's what we're going to do on Saturday. And then you and I have a dinner engagement Saturday night. Mm -hmm. and with then, somebody that we can't talk about with somebody we can't talk about and then they're important people and then uh Closet flat earthers let's just say yes. we're not at liberty to reveal their identity we are not anyone that's still in the flat earth closet i respect that because because 90 something percent of the flat earth community is still in the closet mm. and i mean for yeah it, it just is i mean look look at for example the oh you know what let's let's segue into real quick, the uh, the Russia article. So the Russia Today, who, you know, because they did their own census. Uh, remember, the UK did the thing with u.gov, and they polled, you know, 9,000 Americans and or 8,300 Americans and found out, you know, there was a lot of people from the age of 18 to 24 that were on board with Flat Earth, like a third of them. They were, at, at the very least, they were like not not on board with the globe. And Russia Today did the same thing. And they found out, even, even in their little thing, they found out that 3% admitted 3% were absolutely on board with Flat Earth. And another 7% were not sure. And then the rest were on board with the globe. And thinking, even if you took the lowest number there, you took 3% from of Russia, that's 4 million people. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that's low. I, I, you know full well that the number's higher than that. It's like these are the people that are willing to admit it, uh, you know, with their phone. It's like, you know, if you got your spouse next to you, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm in a, fl I, a globe. Yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> totally in a flat earth, man. Put me down for, for flat. You can see the person deleting their history on their phone. I was never looking at any flat earth videos ever, honey. I mean, it's not, it's not like 
porn. No, it's, it's not, not. Well, it's nothing it's, to be ashamed of, but there no. are some people out there who feel it might ruin their career. It might brand them as crazy. Right. And, um, you know, we cannot do anything other than make it a safe space right. to have more people uh, come out and join the party with us simply by being uh, the genuine, real nice people that we all are. I don't mean just you and I. Um, I mean, everybody who's watching the show uh, yeah. at a later date uh, or live in our chat, just, you know, we're, we're here to, um, to welcome you to the dance floor, you know? Yeah. And uh, let me show on. you some I mean, funky moves. Yeah. There's a, there's a <laughs> lot enough people on the dance floor. You, this is like, we're really getting close to that whole dancing guy thing. Yes. Where, you know, the dancing guy at that festival in Oregon, where I think it was down at the gorge, where he was dancing, he was trying, he was trying, he was trying for a while, and then finally had a couple people, and then it just, it just took off, and, and, you know, it escalates, it gets faster and faster, it kind of at a, a geometric rate. Um, where is that going with this? Uh, oh yeah, no, no, the, the Shane Dawson video. So the what, what's cool about the Shane Dawson video, which I love so much, wasn't the fact just that he had 15 million hits on it. It was that he was scoring almost 90% for, for on the ratings. You'd think, well, it's hell, why didn't his people turn on him, right? It's flat yeah. earth. It's the first time I've seen a conspiracy guy, well, a guy that will go into conspiracies, and that that shows the, the loyalty of his his particular follow, you know, followers, the people that watch his stuff, you know, they, they consider him a very sincere guy, very open-minded. Uh, he wears everything on his sleeve and he's not pushy and he's just a really, really nice guy from what I understand. And it generates, I think it's up to like what, 210,000 comments. That's crazy. I mean, 210,000 people are chiming in on this in one way or another. And there were reaction videos and it's gotten some celebrity, attention which the is thing is is that i am we've come a long way baby since 2015. if yeah. shane dawson would have come out with a with his brother a uh i would have called it a pro flat earth video with a lot of knowledge about flat earth not one of those videos where they say oh well, where's the edge nothing like that i mean obviously shane dawson's brother knows flat earth inside and out he's been watching some videos and doing oh, yeah. some research yeah. if that would have come out in 2015 i would imagine that the comment section in that video would have been littered with you know moron drink bleach don't breed we all know the insults right big, you, big you're absolutely right we we have come a long way and i i that particular comment was not lost on me even though as a very dated cigarette ad yeah, but thank you. The um, this show is filled with all sorts of dated references. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut a rug. Yeah, well, not that dated. <laughs> Twenty three skidoo and uh, the bees one, knees. And... One for the Gipper, the Gipper who was played by Ronald Reagan, which mm. is weird. That's that's really what he's known for. That and those movies he did with the chimpanzees. But anyway, bedtime for Bonzo. Bed yes, bedtime for Bonzo. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. That's I'm always awesome. here to help. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't forget that, that Obama wasn't the first actor in office. It, the first one officially was Reagan. And, you know, he was actually he was pretty good. He was I was in high school when he was uh, when he was in office. So. Yeah. The thing was, he, he started to feel a lot older when he got into the presidency. You know, everyone, I mean, okay, MTV was hot and everybody uh, was very much, right after I graduated high school, I graduated in 81, right. uh, MTV, you know, began. And Ronald Reagan was the butt of jokes and people who were interested in watching MTV who were about that age yeah. uh, hated Ronald Reagan and felt that he was responsible for all the evils of the world. But it's weird how history... Um, looks more favorably upon certain presidents as time goes by. Yeah, I, again, it was different. He was there for the 80s. And you know, for me and a lot of other people, the 80s was a giant party. And people can say, well, no, it was the 60s. No, 60s was a revolution. The 80s was really just a party. But the 60s revolution was probably, we've learned now, controlled by the CIA and made to be a revolution when it really wasn't grassroots. So... The 80s yeah. uh, party, maybe that was legit? Oh, I think so. I mean, it's so. drug-fueled. and But look at MTV and the imagery that they used of space. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and they well, used that Apollo shot for all the way up until 1986 when they revised it and they were using the space shuttle mm -hmm. version of it. They, you know, they revamped it. It's like, yeah, let's update this thing with the space shuttle. And then what happened right after that challenger and MTV trying to adhere to good taste pulled it. 
immediately. And that was it. They never brought it back. MTV wants good taste, but yet they have a video called Pour Some Sugar on Me. <laughs> so. Yeah, don't, don't get me started. Okay, so a couple no, other I things. I think we've been programmed uh, in the 80s and also programmed during the 60s counter color, counter culture, right. counter culture revolution. I think it's all been masterminded by, uh, well, we all know who. So. Right. The devil. Pretty much that would be one way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get the the bad stuff out of the way. It's not even that bad as much. We already as did, a, didn't we? Talking about suicide and strangulation. Uh, <laughs> your strangulation. Oh, yeah. It's not a, <laughs> not an objective uh, strangulation. <sighs> no. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Buzz Aldrin. Because, yes. Uh, it is a cautionary tale, but I would encourage everybody to not. Let it gather around YouTube yeah. or the uh, <laughs> fireplace. Bring, bring it in, kids. Come on, circle because around. Really, I think this is important. Um, yeah. So the Buzz Aldrin clip, the original one was done three years ago by a small YouTube channel with about 2,000 followers. And he, this particular father, I, I don't know his name exactly, this particular father was real keen on his d very young daughter interviewing people so he would feed the daughter questions and she was really good at parroting mm -hmm. you know and he even dressed her in uh, appropriate clothing to the right. interview subject with buzz aldrin she was wearing a, a dress or a top with stars on it right it, it, look he he had that whole that whole routine down and that is look any celebrity or media icon or whatever they're suckers for kids with a microphone you know, it's like, oh, isn't that cute? cute. You know? But, you know, a lot of people might have only come across the Buzz Aldrin video and then what it spawned through the channel Feed Your Mind. Well, they right. used a clip from the original. And right. if you watch the original, you can hear the father kind of feeding the question to the daughter. Right, 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 and, right. And um, you can hear Buzz Aldrin saying many times various versions of we went to the moon, I went to the moon, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. But right. Feed Your Mind took from that um, and I don't know if it was Fiji. It was. It was taken out of context. Sure, it was taken and out of context. Was but was it effective? Yes, it was. Oh yeah, everyone jumped on it. Yeah. Um, and it, this is a cautionary tale. We've had this happen before, a couple of times. And I'm not saying that I'm immune to this, but I remember when the Buzz Aldrin, you know, Feed Your Mind video came out, and everyone started mirroring it. And I know you didn't. I messaged you and I said, I hate when we, meaning flat earthers, including right. myself, jump on things like this without investigating and looking at the entire video and then thinking about what was said and thinking about what it means. Because I'm not saying Buzz Aldrin went to the moon. Of course not. Right. But it wasn't a confession. Now, no. did he slip up? I, I don't think so. I just think Buzz Aldrin, the way he speaks, he sounds like he may have Alzheimer's or might be drinking. And I'm not saying either of those are true, but he's got that sound to the way he speaks nowadays. And at, um, just rambling. At, so at the very least, it may, even if you listen to the entire interview, it made him sound like he knew more than he was letting on. At the very least, you know, the, because the question was solid, and that was, why haven't we gone back? The, the, right. the original question was completely legitimate. Why haven't we gone back to the moon? And you can, he, he, he was talking, he was rambling, yes, but he was kind of talking in a way, at the very least, saying kind of like he knew why we weren't going yeah, back to the moon. Yeah, something like, that's not your question to the little girl, that's one of my questions, meaning he's got that same question. Right. And then he kind of said we didn't go. And then earlier he said we did. Right. I don't really think it was a confession. I don't see it that way. We all know um, he's guilty. Although I don't know if they use mind control to make people like Buzz Aldrin think they really went or they're straight up liars. I have right. absolutely no idea. We, we may never know. There's a lot of mysteries about the whole flat earth thing S where we might never know the exact shape, the exact map. It, you know, we it just might be one of those things. But... Yeah, so, I think we jumped on it too quickly and spread it too quickly as if definitely it was a confession and definitely the jig is up. I, that part didn't concern me as much. Look, things are taken out of context all the time and it was effective in generating buzz. No question. Literal uh, buzz. I'll do literal that. buzz. Uh, the part that concerned me was that the father... <laughs> Uh, was not amused by this that the flat earth community jumped all over this clip and even though this clip was three years old he decided to throw copyright strikes at people 
And for anyone that knows how those strikes work, it's pretty, you know, it's in stages. It's not an all or nothing thing. You can, you can email the person and say, hey, dude, not cool or whatever. You can send them a seven day takedown notice, which says, look, you've got seven days to pull this. Or you can just you've go for seven days. You've got seven. <laughs> Or else, in your in your mouth. Yeah, uh, so yeah, you, or you can go for broke and just go for the the original, you know, the hardcore strike, and that's what he did. He just started start going from the top down, and anyone, any big channels that had it, boom, 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 just started throwing those things out like candy. Uh, and so, anybody that's got a strike for this for the very first time, I highly encourage you to use the appeal process. Uh, if you do not know what fair use is, because this is a, about as clear as fair use as anything, it's not like you were videotaping the daughter or you know you you stole it from somewhere. He and had it Buzz up Aldrin on. Buzz Aldrin is a public figure. And Bub Buzz Aldrin is a public figure, and the video was up for three years at, on a very small channel. And I think he was just look, he's obviously an astronaut fan. He probably hates flat Earth. And so he decided to do this, but appeal it, you know, just go, don't take down the video. Don't delete it. Cause it's not going to do anything. If you delete it, just go to the appeal process. Don't say request a retraction. Cause that does nothing. But that just says request ret retraction literally takes you to a screen that says you should email the person that made <laughs> that, that did the strike against you. It's like, oh, okay, really? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Why you had to make a link to that. You know, why, why not a rollover? It doesn't matter. So, well, if um, a person has problems putting the right words together, and YouTube only takes actions on videos of any sort, copyright strike or whatever it may be, community right. guidelines, when the wording is appropriate, when they find that the wording matches up with what they find are violations, would you be willing to um, help somebody who might need? Oh a, yeah, 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 yeah. If with anyone the, with the verbiage. Oh, absolutely. I've got a, I did this for uh, Robbie Davidson, who mirrored it, and he got his taken down. Most of them, in fact, it's funny, one of them that didn't get taken down, it's got a lot of hits, it's in Spanish. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and so I don't think the guy can even really understand it, and I don't even know if you can... Uh, anyway, so if anyone wants the uh, the verbiage for this, how exactly what to do, you can just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I will send you the little fair use thing that I drew up, mm -hmm. which is very, very easy. It's two. It's a two-part thing. You say you appeal, you paste in exactly what I've got in there, and then uh, the second part is if they come back and say, no, I really want to strike you, then all right, fine. And then you pay doing the second part. And you know who I got this from originally? Who? Oh. Got from ODD. Very interesting. Because as you know, he has been struck a whole bunch of times. Right. And thank you, ODD. Yeah. Yeah. And I and look, this is by as far as fair use goes, I've seen worse than this get overturned. Very, very easily overturned. So uh, I, I can't see where the, I mean, if the father wants to go for broke, he can. But that'll just generate more interest for us. I mean, if he actually goes all the way to the mat on this, well, there's it's a couple of theories. Publicity. Some people thought that perhaps the father is in on these things, and this was made purposely. And I'm just saying what some people have said that this was made purposely three years ago and then held back. Although it wasn't held back, it was on a YouTube channel. But uh, then somehow it was made public and I got saw... attention, so that. Uh, that the bigger flat earth channels would have jumped on it, which many did, and then they could be taken down or at least get a strike toward taking them down. Yeah. I mean, that's a long, uh, yeah. Co remember copyright strikes are different from community guideline strikes. Mm -hmm. If you want to bait somebody to get them sm smacked, you try to bait them into a community guideline strike where you uh, get them to threaten you. You know, you just make a whole bunch of inflammatory things against that channel and, and hope you can get enough collateral damage. You can get a community guideline because the, the normal strikes, you know, that's only going to get you so far. And one strike literally does nothing to you. So anyway, yeah, so that's I a just, theory a few people had. And also it reminds me of uh, the whole uh, Stanley Kubrick, the film that was found that showed that Stanley right. Kubrick had admitted that he had filmed the uh, moon landing, which the was secret. an absolute fake. But, you know, it the looked secret, sort secret, of legit. Yeah, the secret 1999 footage from Stanley Kubrick where mm -hmm. he supposedly was talking about how he faked the moon mission. And then whoever made that, I think whoever filmed it or was doing the editing, he didn't like what they were doing with this thing. And so he released the outtakes. 
and that's they were just blew the whole thing wide open. And so I, but I bid on it for a, a few hours anyway, and then I retracted it immediately. Now there's still copies out there, but of course the most damning thing besides the outtake video which you know the guy has a different name and you can hear the director yelling at him i was like really because stanley kubrick would take uh, you know stage direction like that mm -hmm. you know, a guy yelling was the fact that it was shot in hd and there was no hd there was in 1999 no HD. so kind of like anne frank uh the diary of anne frank was written in ballpoint pen supposedly and there wasn't oh yeah pen back then it was written on uh dukes of hazard stationery <laughs> which is kind of yeah. not what happened. I would have thought yeah. that somebody would have caught that. Yeah, well. But or or in in fact the second half was written on My Little Pony stationery. Mm -hmm. Well, she was a girl, so Yeah. I think they gave her a pass on that. Yeah. So anyway, the point is if anybody got a strike on it, uh just you know, we'll be able to follow the follow the lead of the other the big channels that that are going to appeal because I'm sure everybody like ODD, he he got smacked for it. Uh, well, I'm just saying that we need to, like the Stanley Kubrick thing should have taught us a lesson. And also the whole thing with Bilu and the uh, the uh, Convex Earth documentary. Um, th th these are lessons that we are being taught, whether they're being done on purpose to teach us lessons or to catch us out. But it, it, it's just wise to look before you leap, watch the full video, not just a partial video that another channel puts up, and right. determine for yourself whether or not it's really an admission of guilt by a Stanley Kubrick or a Buzz Aldrin or whatever comes right. next, or yeah. if this is something that could be read two ways and tread I, lightly, you know, it, because, you know, we don't need to be, we don't need to look any crazier than people already think the term flat earth means. I agree with you. It's a tall order though, because as you know, we, you know, we're, we're excited. Well, that and we we're part find the smoking gun, you know, YouTube, chan you, YouTube channels aren't that much different from other media outlets. And that is look it, who, who gets the scoop. That's true. You know, it, who's scoop, who's scooping who, as a matter of fact, one of the, the clicks, reasons, you know, one of the reasons I didn't put it on my channel was by the time I got a copy of, there was a few already up there. It's like, yeah, you know what, let's let him run with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe I'll put it up later. Maybe I won't. But I wasn't waiting for, I do, honestly did not think the father was going to, was going to just start doing that. But it didn't, it, so when it happened, it didn't surprise me. Because as you know, I've seen people freaking lose it for no, you know, no other reason other than they have the power to give out strikes. Like mm -hmm. the um, uh, the Trailer Park Boys, you know, the, the big Canadian group that, that does comedy. Uh, and they've got a big YouTube following and a big uh, internet following. And they hired a group that that all they do is go out and check content on different media platforms. Content and, cops. Yeah, and whatever kid was doing it on his side, he was oh my lord, is again power corrupts, and he wouldn't even wouldn't even blink. And we got into this this not even an argument, just a discussion because he confused me. I think you know the story. He confused me with John Levant. Because John LeBond wow. got, John I mean, you LeBond, know what? I'd never ever make that mistake myself. Well, what did ha Okay, here's why. That Australian accent, you know. No, no, not not <laughs> not that got. we were that. No, you're the same guy. But Those John dreadlocks LeBond, that you've got. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, he. Took oh wait, his, yeah, he hates flat Earth too. So, how did he get you and John LeBond confused? confused? Didn't I tell you this? No, I don't even. Oh, good lord! Um, so what had happened was, if you if you remember, so I did the Trailer Park Boys video, mm -hmm. and then John Lebon took it, and took that video, and he thought it was pretty cool, and he chopped it up and put his own narration in between segments. It's like, okay, here's where these guys are seeing this, and here's, and he also was coming after me, which was weird. He kept saying my name. Oh, so maybe by the virtue of him saying your name, yes. it can cause the guy, the content cop, to think that that was you. Okay, I get yes. it. And so what happened was, and then he struck both the videos at the same time. He struck mine and he struck John's. And what happened was we both responded at the same time. And he confused. It's like, oh, well, Mark's K. Sargent is messaging me, but this other video that I nailed, which also had Mark K. Sargent somewhere in the, the narration, it's got to be the same guy. And so he he met he messaged me, not John the Bond, um, the, the guy, and he says, hey, he goes, you know, well, the um, the video you put up, it was like nine minutes long. It was probably too long. He goes, I liked your other one much better. I go, other one? 
Hmm. He's, hmm. He's, Hi, I'm, I'm looking around going, what the hell? And then I find it, but I wasn't going to correct the guy. I figured, okay. What I didn't know was, you know, John Lamont, he, he can be a little bit of a hothead. And so he, John Lamont apparently went after this guy and just said, look here, expletive, expletive, fill in the blank here, you know, just, just read him the riot act. And so next thing I know, this guy is writing me saying, you know what? I'm glad I did the strike, blah, blah, blah. You're a piece of work, blah, blah, blah. And I go, and I hadn't talked to this guy in days. And so I wrote him and I, my, one of my last emails to him, I go, um, I don't know who you're mad at exactly, but we haven't talked since Tuesday. Are you could are you confusing me with 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 John John Lebon? And I there's this pause in the other end. He, he writes back one line. He goes, "Well, you guys all sound the same." And that was the, that was the end of Which, it. Which even there because John Lebon's Australian. Yeah. So. Well, you know, in the text, in the text, oh, that's what he was. Okay. So that was it. Fair use. I said, "Fine, fair use." You don't want to, and I, I offer, I offer the same thing I offer everybody. I go, you take the strike down, I'll pull the video down. Simple, mm -hmm. plain, plain and simple. He's like, like, nope, that strike's staying. Like, whatever. Hmm. Oh well. There you go. So there's karma. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, is that yes, please appeal the the Buzz Aldrin thing. You want the Buzz Aldrin Aldrin thing back up? You you absolutely can do that. Um, let me go into the live chat and it's been zooming by and I haven't been paying any attention. Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here. And I'm also happy to have the uh, few moderators that I've got. I appreciate it. And uh, what I do want to ask, and maybe earlier in the show, this was discussed when we were talking about the whole Buzz Aldrin thing and whether it was a confession or whether it was a, a misunderstood Buzz rambling thing. Right. What does everyone here think? Let's do a, a vote. Um, you know, put a one if you think uh, it is uh, a confession of some sort or an accidental confession. And put a two if you think uh, that it was, you know, uh, just taken out of context. So let's do that right now and see if anyone, well, you know, is actually even listening. <laughs> Chris Topher says one, confession. Eric Child says one, no name says two. Hori Sheet says one. Uh, Diva Spawn Scorpio. Oh my gosh, it's going too fast. There's one. Um, oh my gosh, you guys are too fast. <laughs> no, I can I can see it. Uh, two, uh, five two, 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 one, two, one, one one half, uh, two, two, three. That's funny. <laughs> Josh one, Parker says Buzz is drunk. Six, six, six. <laughs> one half, one, two, one I half. I think it's a tie. Two, yeah. Yeah. Six, ginger Sugar Bush, three. I didn't see it. A racer FE says one slash two. two. I mean, one and two. You know, what he said was a Freudian slip. I'll bet that, but I don't believe it was an actual confession. Right. So, you know, anyway. Anyway. I mean, but anyway, thanks for the vote. Uh, we're going to uh, just leave it up in the air, so to speak. Um, and I want to also thank Chris Topher because not now, but when the video actually makes it to YouTube, he made the thumbnail for this particular show so anyway um a bunch of people are saying different things and they said that like josh from morgan is saying he didn't even see it it can still be found oh yeah YouTube. it's it's out there but it's a little harder now mm -hmm. exactly uh, and the big channels don't don't have it the only one i saw that had i think it was 25 30 thousand uh hits was spanish which was interesting because it was well, dubbed. It was dubbed in Spanish. The guy actually dubbed everything that Buzz had said. So very interesting. Mm. So uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of cool people in the live chat. I love that. Um, I'm sorry that I haven't been as consistent with doing shows, but like I said, I've been super busy. There's lots of stuff I'm doing around my house and stuff involving my my personal life and my family. So. Anyway, Paul on the Plane says, my mirror of Buzz got 24,000 views in the first 48 hours and like 600 over the last four days. But Paul, hmm. is your video still up? Can people go yeah, to Paul is, on the Plane and check it out? He's saying, okay, I'm out. Stay flat, y'all. Well, go check out Paul on the Plane's channel because if you haven't seen it and you want to, do it. You know what I kind of want to, to see happen here? Mm -hmm. I really kind of want the father to go for broke and and say like, no, man, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stick it to flat earth. And then we just get a whole bunch of publicity because you, to, up until now, flat earth is, mainstream didn't 
get a hold of it and make a big deal out about the crazy flat earthers trying to manipulate the a, a young child's words or something. Uh, it takes a little while for mainstream to to get, and you never know. I mean, with the headlines, it's it's a crapshoot sometimes. DITRH says that his uh, Buzz Aldrin video is still up. So check out Paul on the Plane if it's still up and definitely DITRH. Yeah, Paul says, yes, mine is still up. Yeah, the link is being put into the live chat right now. So hmm. <laughs> Joey Rocha is saying, DITRH is a hero. <laughs> Hi to space is fake too. And Daniel Reza and Pancho Pete is here too. Um, Isa Mahalski, hello, how are you? And uh, Snack to the Future too. Um, Anders Ace as well and Phuket 020. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, oh no, I want to answer Issa Mahalski's question if I think QAnon is legit. Now, I know very little about QAnon because I pay absolutely no attention to any of that. I don't vote. I don't pay attention to politics. I think it's all a game. I think it's all rigged. I think they're, you know, selected, not elected, and I think it's a game. Um, QAnon, I don't think that that's legit. I think it's a distraction. That's my take on it. But then again, it's coming from my perspective, which is not a learned perspective when it comes to politics or QAnon. So uh, Hi Fruity You is here and says, Q knows. Um, Isa, what do you think? What do you think about QAnon? What does everyone else think about QAnon? Mark, what do you think? Uh, I don't really have much of an opinion on QAnon. Angel Raven 444 says what I said, but quicker. QAnon is like Alex Jones, just filler for sheeple. So, right. you know, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's anything to it. Because well, weren't we supposed to have, you know, Hillary Clinton arrested and all of these other things? Right. Taken away and, you know, handcuffs. and. I should also mention that, uh, because I know you've been distracted as of late, but I'm sure you recognize the title of my last Strange World episode, which is that Flat Earth has broken the YouTube scoreboard. Mm -hmm. I think you broke the internet. Uh, Even look, I'm not, I am not going to... Kardashian's gonna, okay. butt. <laughs> first, first off, the Flat Earth community as a whole is responsible for this. We were the ones that broke it, so take pride in that. Uh, am I going to take a little credit for drawing attention to the scoreboard as much as as much as I did? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The uh, wh what's the old cheer? You know, because I grew up with a cheerleader. So you remember that whole "We got spirit." Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? you no, know, and then the other side says it, and you say it, and then eventually, what happens is they say, "We got more." Look at the score. We got more. Look at the store. That's that's who that, that's who starts the cheer, and that's who finishes it because like you know, wh whatever team is winning. Be aggressive. Be be aggressive like that. B e a g g r e s s i v e. Yeah, I know it. Mm -hmm. I know them all. It was drilled into my head Saturday mornings. Drove because your insane. sister was cheerleader. Oh, she wasn't just. She was Regina George, captain of the cheerleaders type person. Uh -huh. Drove me insane. <laughs> and all her friends like, oh, it's good. Practice at Minda's house. Like I'm trying well, to sleep. I think that that sounds like an '80s uh, sitcom or a, a, one of those movies um, by uh, John Hudson, where you being Houston. the or Houston. John Hudson. No, 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 uh, no, no. It's not where you would be people. completely, you know, stoked as they used to say to have all of these cheerleaders over at your house. Yeah, but most of them I grew up with. Most of them were my sister's friends. No, they had absolutely no appeal. Nah, not really. I mean, they, you know, they were cute. Don't get me wrong. They, they were cute, but they, but since I grew up with them, it was different. So yeah, I no, I, I didn't. Plus there was the fear of my sister. He wouldn't dare. Um, Issa Mahalski responded to what I had asked. What does he think about QAnon? He says, Ward, Patricia, thank you. Close to 40,000 sealed indictments. Check it out. So is he saying, Isa, you'll have to clarify. So you're saying QAnon's legit and there's 40,000 indictments. Why are they sealed? What does that mean? Will they be unsealed? Is someone going to jail? That's what I want to know. Good point. Okay, so the scoreboard, what I meant was, and you guys know because I've done a whole bunch of videos on this. I was one of the only guys doing videos on this. Uh, I'm the originator. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you created Flat Earth. It's I your created movement. Flat Earth. <laughs> no, but I was, I'm a huge stat guy. You know this. You know, I love scores. I love stats. And so I really enjoyed watching the numbers go up in Flat Earths. And what I'm talking about, if you go into YouTube and you type in anything, let's say, let's type in George Clooney, for example. 
Why, of all things, would you type in I don't know. Clooney on The Secret Show? Hmm. I don't know. And you probably know, noted that uh, I used a deleted scene from the movie Up in the Air with George Clooney, where he played. He was an ast he's, he was in an astronaut suit walking through an airport. Uh, maybe you didn't notice it. Anyway, oh, I I've included it. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. So it's in all the Q&A uh, shows now. So anyway, you put that in, what you would get is, like with anything, you can go into Google and look at this. I mean, it is as old as the internet itself. And that, as you would see, search results equals a number. And that number can go any, I don't know, anywhere from 50 to 50 million, right? And we would track this. And we were, we've always been scoring high. And then they stunted our numbers back about uh, 18 months ago. And then Bob from Globuster says, no, no, just you, you know, uh, filter by upload date and we'll get those numbers, the real numbers. And I watched it literally go from 14 million all the way up until it caught Donald Trump. And I made that very specific video. It's literally called Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States. Probably shouldn't have been that specific. And when we caught him, he had 20.8 million and we had 20.9 million. And then almost immediately afterwards, they stunt the numbers. And then they said, you know what? Screw this. And they remove the numbers entirely. So now when you go into YouTube and you type any topic in you want, there is no line anymore that says search results equals a number. So, yeah. Now, are they going to eventually put it back? Because there are other people. Forget about Flat Earth. There's other people I on know. the internet who want to know uh, how they're scoring when it comes to um, hair and makeup videos, cute cat videos, uh, you know, Minecraft videos, etc. There, there are internet, yeah, not just individuals, but but internet marketing companies that look at this these numbers all the time. Now, if they want to go ahead and say that Mark ruined it for everybody, yeah, okay, fine, uh, I'll I'll take that. I think that's so. I think it's a baby in the bathwater. I type think it of sounds like a great uh, summer movie title. Mark ruined it for everybody. <laughs> Mark ruined it for everybody. I feel <laughs> on, I'm I'm a keen. And on one hand, I'm like going, "Wow, that's pretty amazing that that would happen." On the other hand, I'm like I'm feeling guilty because yeah, I, I I don't get to see my numbers anymore, but nobody does either for anything. So, and, and yes, their excuse is they can go, you can say, well, you can just look it up in Google. So the Google numbers are there. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just go into Google, type in a topic and you will see search results equals. And I think we're around 400 million in Google right now, which is monstrous. Now I'm not going to make a video on that anytime soon because I'm not sure if they'll do anything there as well. I don't want them all of a sudden start. The point was, is I think they really took uh, not necessarily a fence, but it irritated them that we were pointing at the scoreboard so much and saying, look, we're just cleaning the clock well, off of every mainstream. We time. already know that uh, the people that are very high up can manipulate actual YouTube videos, you know, like Jaron right. Campanella found out. Right. Um, the uh, editing the video after it's already without taking it down. Um, right. They can do anything that they want to do. They, they do. Yes, they do. It the could power. have been their way of saying, you know what? Yeah, you're you're playing really well, but it's our board. Bop and, on our heads. That's pretty, yeah. Pretty that's much pretty much what it. They did. <laughs> so in one sense, no. I mean, I don't get to see the numbers anymore, and I don't get to talk about the numbers anymore. But in the other sense. I don't have to worry about catching Taylor Swift or Katy Perry or, you know, any of those or Justin Bieber or the really, really huge guys, you know, because we were getting into that that tier. And of, by the way, it's not that we care about Trump or Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, but it's just an indicator because mainstream people look them up for some reason. It's an indicator of how many people are looking up Flat Earth. So I, I, I'm sorry. I, well, Taylor okay, Swift, maybe you uh, Ta Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift. She's, she's really, really talented. So I, I can't. Justin Bieber, no, 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 and and I say that only because the first time I ever heard a song of his, uh, I remember commenting to some interns that were in our office that they had to have been you know twenty years old. I said, "Wow, she has an incredible voice," and they just looked at me in horror. And they go, "It's a guy." I'm going, "Really? Sure." Well, I remember hearing uh, the Jackson Five, and I was quite young. And you know Michael Jackson with the family, and I thought uh, I thought Michael Jackson was a girl's voice singing. So are we talking about Jackson Five in the '60s or Jackson Five in the '70s? In the '70s. Oh uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I yeah, think the want... song was called Ben, I think is the song I'm talking about. Or maybe right. that was Michael Jackson solo, but whatever. And that was way before any sort of transgender allegations were, you know, hitting the mainstream. I really right. thought that was a yeah. that was a girl. So um, So anyway, um I don't I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do with the numbers at this point since they're not on YouTube anymore and the only ignore numbers ignore them and then they'll come back one day and you'll be messaging me like the numbers are back. And if the, new the phone if, books if, are out. The new phone books are out. If <laughs> I'm somebody now. Extra points if you know what movie that comes. Yeah, from. extra points if you know what movie that's from. Yeah. He hates these cans. <laughs> Stay away from the cans. Uh, the, they don't make them like. This. No, they don't. Uh, yeah. I, well, here's the here's the thing. If they release a story soon and say why, I mean, it's it's one thing if you revamp the entire YouTube interface. And you make some changes here and there. Look, I know a lot about software updates and hot fixes and how you roll out new versions and crap like that. And this was literally the only thing that happened. It's like I just look up there and go, "Where's where's the numbers?" You went, "Huh?" And and it's not like <laughs> and, and it, it's not like an accident where because it's literally if you guys want to remember where they were, they were under the filter button. So after you were done searching for something you would look underneath the filter button and it would say search results equals. So it's not like I said, I it said search results equals scrambled <laughs> or search results equals zero or search results equals blank. The word search results aren't there anymore. Yes, that's odd. So anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I won't talk about this anymore and then I'll I will eventually you decide stop breaking things you're like a bull in a chest well, look, uh, <laughs> look it was really cool that we caught God I hope it wasn't the Trump administration that did that. Because well, I think that would be petty. Issa Mahalski earlier uh, had mentioned that uh, the uh, launch towers, the NASA at Cape Canaveral launch towers, have been demolished. Um, after 62 years in service, la launching rockets up into the ocean, <laughs> right. up and into the ocean, they have been demolished. To me, that seems like they've destroyed uh, a crime scene. Think about it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so... I have also, uh, by the way, I've also been getting a lot of requests for the 12 slides that uh, my guest, Just Jack, from the uh, the AutoCAD technician, if you remember yes. that episode, where yes. he said he came up with 12 slides. Where They seem like they're a variation of DITRH's coffee table uh, book. Yeah, and I have uh, that book proudly. But he picked 12 slides. Yes, you do, and I don't. You also have the uh, you get a lot of things. I so, bought the book with my own money. <laughs> you could have bought one too. Yes, I could have. <laughs> so uh, I support DITRH. You obviously don't. And he'll have to take that up with you tomorrow. That is LA. because fist fight, one, fist fight. Everyone gather around. I don't like him as a person. <laughs> don't say that on the air. <laughs> he can meet me in the parking lot after school. Okay. So. If you don't know what reference we're talking you about there, his ass tomorrow. <laughs> you could either use the 80s, the early 80s movie, The Bodyguard, or the later 80s movie, Three O'Clock High. Mm. Uh, no, no, David, uh, sorry, DITRH is not going to be with us until yeah, Friday. Yeah, no, just sounded. Right, not tomorrow. Yeah, what no, I was saying. Yeah, we'll, we'll rumble in the airport. Uh, well, the, I think he's flying into LAX. So the 12 slides, so if anyone wants the 12 slides, I've got them zipped on my machine. I will send it to you. I've already gotten a whole bunch of requests so far because he touted it as, look, you can show people these 12 pictures, and if you can get them to look at them, they're on their way. The seed has been planted. It's like, wow. Can you um, describe said slides? Yeah, please do. Yes, dear. One's got a beautiful shade of blue. And <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on. Let me no. get rid of my. Well, I, I think a lot of people. Okay, from the vegan world, and once once a show, I'll mention veganism. From the vegan world, there's a film, a documentary called Earthlings. It's been out quite some time, and it shows a lot of horrors happening to animals. And a lot of vegans believe that if you show that film to anybody, they'll become instantly vegan. Well, I've linked it to people, and they've said, "Well, I watched it while I was eating a burger." So maybe films like Earthlings, or you know, things like those those pictures that will instantly awaken you to flat earth don't work on everybody you've got to actually have an open mind first okay so i've got the slides up okay. and what they are i can describe them pretty quickly because we anyone in flat earth knows this one is the curvature of the earth chart 
eight Careful. inches per mile squared with that with the, with the globe in the background the next one is longest land photo pick def, um longest from world record um photography site so it shows the 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 shot uh, of where you're looking over the mountains 275 miles long distance shot and mirages pictures of mirages he says 52 miles away should have over 1800 feet of curvature hiding the tallest building completely that's from chicago uh he's got the denang kunshan grand bridge in china we, we probably all remember that shot where it's 100 miles long and it should have a ton of curvature and it doesn't look like it's got any we've got actual flight map you know where something from australia goes all the way up to san francisco and then down to south america mm -hmm, where the woman gave birth no that's different well, that one well from, that could have from, been that could have been included excuse me that's a different yeah you could have used that that could have been used yeah you could have used that one if you wanted to and that one was the philippines going from philippines to san francisco yes, yes. and they should have stopped in hawaii but and that's the part everyone leaves out it's not that they just diverted to alaska it was that hawaii was right in front of them on a globe it should have been right there and yet they went to alaska it's like why in the world look if i had to choose between honolulu hospitals and anchorage hospitals i'm going you know with the sunny place at least you get a better view the next one was the satellites uh talking about how many pieces of space junk and how many things are you know th there should be it like it like the movie wally -E, where there was just so much debris you couldn't even get through it uh let's see. that's how it should be but it's not one of them was the kind of a reference to neil degrasse tyson's oblate spheroid a blade pear shaped spheroid, which he makes, he somebody made in Photoshop, and and yet the the images they show us are pixel perfect spheres. Uh, and all of a sudden, we started hearing the term oblate spheroid when Flat Earth made the scene. Oh Before yeah, that we were always told it was a sphere or a globe, you know. Right. One is. But why do you think that was injected into this whole thing? The term oblate spheroid. Why did Neil? uh get told uh or feel the need to say that sort of thing oh i think he was just trying to i think he was just trying to sound intelligent you know i think it's, it's to hide us something if if i don't know i i, I don't it, 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 I, I think it's i think it's more organic than that to I help mean, rationalize maybe why the different uh blue marble shots look different or just some some way that they could uh, they could get out of the lies they've told maybe could could be except that i think that uh he was just trying to out nerd the audience you can always tell a nerd argument because both sides start their sentences with the word actually and it's like it, you you understand right it's you know, very nasally you know actually the world is not it's not a perfect sphere you know that's they they love to throw out those little facts they, they try to out fact each other and that's what he was doing and i think he just got carried away uh one is the scott simmons quote literally verbatim it's photoshopped because it has to be with some stuff above that the one is the cloning tool a zoom in of the cloning tool stuff which we saw while we were down in houston at nasa from that image from the uh, blue marble shot that they used on the iphone one is from russia's high def space image that has all these oranges the color palette is just completely screwed up one is a weather balloon shot with a flat horizon at 120,000 feet. One is the United Nation logos. One is how a sun works on uh, sun and moon work on an AE map. And we're almost to the last ones. Uh, one is four observable proofs of the flat earth. One hotspot directly Two water is always level three, the corpuscular rays and four, the horizon rising to meet your eye. And the last one without any caption at all, which I thought was interesting is a close up shot of the moon lander with an astronaut sitting in front of it. Crystal well, you just look at that thing now or any of the original footage of the right. moon landing and that should be, I mean, just looking at that. Yeah, that's, it's awful. Yeah, definitely. Super terrible. So if anyone wants that, you can just email me and I can send it to you uh, or make your own. You know, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, his stuff is good, but maybe you can come up with something better. You know, experiment a little bit. But his, he's pretty... He's pretty confident that these slides, if you show them, they don't even have to be in any particular order, I don't think, as long as you can explain them. 
as long as you can't just show it to them. You've got to be able to know, you know, what you're showing them. And other things like the Van Allen radiation be belts, are they deadly? Well, if so, how do we get through them before? And why does NASA say they can't now to get to Mars? Right. Um, so many other things like, like that, uh, so many anomalies. What about all of the uh, information about how to build uh, the, the different rockets that went to the moon? Uh, right. Why is that now lost? Why can't they do that now? Why can't they do it again, do it again, do it again? You know, right. um, there's so many things. But you know what? The average person who's asleep when you show pictures like this, or when you tell them these things, often says things like, well, they lost interest in the space missions. People didn't care anymore. And they always have a rationalization. There's uh, you know, a, a small percentage of people, I don't know what it is, 3%, who will say, very interesting, let me look into that on my own. And those are the ones who become flat earthers. Indeed. But, this, but the percentage is growing. Um, did you see the video that came out? Um, well, there was a video that came out in May by uh, Casey Josh or K Casey Josh slash Casey Josh. It's a two part channel. Um, it's a video about the Bermuda Triangle and Cape Canaveral. And a couple other people did videos taking off on that vid video. Uh, another YouTuber named Adam made one. And it's about how the Bermuda Triangle may be the um, uh, graveyard for all of NASA's, you know, failures or the, the rockets that supposedly went into space, but we all know <laughs> will go up and then crash down. Maybe. Um, uh, an interesting concept. Anyway. How, They've got to have a, a place to hide all that stuff the, but where nobody will generally go because it's so dangerous. Well, and, and I was about to say, if you're going to go down that road, don't forget that the mysterious stuff that's been happening there was happening long, long, long before NASA. Interesting. And there was some very, very high profile stuff that Maybe happened. they tied it in uh, by by having they, that I where mean, the it, rockets go. It, it would be a good like place a safety to send. measure. Yeah, it, it would be a good place to, to, to send stuff, no question. Uh, the most noble one, which was covered in various movies and documentaries, was Flight 19. The um, Navy planes, four Navy, you know, they were flying in a, in a big squadron and they were were attacking a, an old Hulk or something like that. And for whatever reason, they got disoriented and they could not, all four of them could not make it back. They just kept flying and flying and then they lost contact. But that was the most interesting part about the story. That those was, They disappeared, never did find them. What was interesting was when they sent out a flying boat an Osprey class plane, you know, crew of, I don't know, 15, fi Those you know, on, a, on so cool. If you've never look one up on YouTube. Oh yeah. I mean, and these things were meant to, for rescue. They were meant to land in the water, you know, the old school stuff, right? Land in the water. We, we still use that. This when men were of, men. When men were men. Uh, and that thing disappeared. Now it's like, okay, the one planes, they couldn't land on the water, but this particular thing, and it wasn't bad weather or anything, this thing got lost with a full crew and then they just freaked out and they just started sending boats everywhere they could and they never could find anything. So yeah, Bermuda Triangle, don't, don't think that it is made up necessarily. It is a spooky, spooky place that has been going, you know, weird stuff has been happening there for okay, a long time. Okay, so if indeed it's true, and it's not just a Cape Canaveral dumping grounds, um, and, and obviously you've shown me that that's a bit short-sighted for me to think so, that it was because it, the Bermuda Triangle has always been that dangerous place right. for many, 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 many years prior. Yeah. Uh, what do you think it is? Magnetism, something magnetic there, something very interesting that if we found it might be a secret, or it might be a key to some of the mysteries that we're looking into? Could be remnants of an old civilization, sure. Really? Why, why not? Uh, ancient, I don't know, some people have talked that it's like leftover technology that run amok, you know, where it's just, there's a, like a bad reactor, you know, bad advanced reactor that's just causing all sorts of chaos. Hard to say, or it could be an advanced civilization that's just basically saying to everybody, you know what? Don't come here. <laughs> this this little place right here, that's ours. Don't don't come in here. And and if let, let's say for example you were that advanced civilization, we're going to go out on a limb here for a second. And you told I came to you and I said you're the government. And I say, "Madam President, you can't come here." Well, unfortunately, you're kind of stuck because you can't tell the general population that. <laughs> so all you can do is spread as many stories as you can. It's like, yeah, you really shouldn't go down there. Well, that Why sounds not? like the globe lie when they found out that the Earth was not a globe. If that's indeed how it all went down, people right. gathered together and said, okay, we got to keep this from the general populace. But you can't tell them. 
Right. It's, we way, it's weird. You've got the information, but you can't. So yeah, again, why you can't get out to the edge. Okay, we can't get people out there. Let's just lock this thing down. Well, the Bermuda Triangle was fairly easy. You know, all you have to do is tell a few stories about the Kraken and the, the rest is easy. You know, ship sailors are extremely superstitious. Uh, so, and all you need to do is like have a few degrees of separation. It's like I knew a guy who knew a guy who was eaten by a Kraken and that's it. Nobody's going in there. Ow. I know. <sighs> Um, let's see what's going on. Oh, a knowledge scavenger. Paula says that, uh, the channel wise up has good theories on ancient megaliths and tech. That stuff's fascinating because you know, you're always saying things like we're not the first ones to inhabit this apartment. Nope. Um, you know, it, to me, that seems to be quite true as well. Uh, all the things that we've been told about the pyramids, everything that we've been told about these ancient structures and art and civilizations, you know, it, it's not, it's not the way that we've been taught at all. Let me let me take that one step further and how easy it would be for us to create that same sort of disparity. Let's say, for example, you created a fake apocalypse, right? Whatever it is. And really, in our country, all you have to do is shut down the, the food distribution lines and we'd be we'd be in trouble. So, but you keep the military, you put them, send them to Cheyenne Mountain or send them wherever. And the military is underground for a while. You they do not have to be underground very long at all. A generation or two tops. Right. And then. By that time, I mean, the people have lost because then when, when people are having to survive, they lose everything. You know, higher education's gone, basic education's gone, even language starts deteriorating in some in some areas. You know, you have to homeschool everybody. The point is, is that within a couple of generations, all you have to do is get to the point where no one remembers what a helicopter is because no one's ever seen one. Right. And then all of a sudden, a couple of helicopters come out of Cheyenne Mountain. What do you think those people are going to do? They're going to look, they're going, what in? god's name is that and they will freak out because they've never ever seen it and that's what less than 50 years you could do that you don't even need a thousand years to do it so the the gaps between our civilizations don't have to be hundreds of thousands or millions of years long they can be very very small we can do this right now with people we can create uh, that whole level we can the the military if they came out after 50 years would be revered as demigods with all their tech and, and all the other, because people would be scrapping for, you know, they'd be using, going back to the, the Amish type of, of levels. I mean, the technology I have here in my house, if we show that to very primitive people, right, they would think I was a god. Oh, look, sorry. You got I mean, look at my cell phone. Take, I can yeah, move how, the world with this thing. Exactly. <laughs> you take this back, right? You take this back. I can take a picture and steal your soul. Oh, hell. It, it, 50 years, if you go back 50 years, you have a hard time explaining this to people, right? 50 years. If mm -hmm. you go back 150 years, you would probably be burned at the stake. Oh, yes. And, and also, when cell phones go dead, they're absolutely an impenetrable piece of plastic. If right. that was found, it, it doesn't, do, it's a box. It doesn't do anything. It and no one anything. would be able to figure out what it was. Right. I mean, hundred. Think of all the questions. For example, because I, I love time travel movies and I love the the whole idea of of how you can mess with timelines. I if don't you, think that there's such a thing as time travel, though. It just can't be. Well, not here, no. But that's a whole other discussion for another time. Okay. So, let's say you went back 150 years with this, right? I think of all the questions you would have to. Uh, where do you start? Okay, first off, you'd have to explain plastics, because they don't have them. Right then, you'd have to explain uh, the the electronics inside. Where do you start with that? Uh, radio? There's no radio. Uh, shortwave communication? Uh, no. How how about cameras? Uh, how about anything? How do you explain wireless? How do you explain a network? How this thing works? There's so many that you would have. You could spend a month with people and still not to be able to reverse engineer it. They just you know some things have to happen naturally slowly mm -hmm. built on top of built on top of and so when you break that in and, and the sad thing is unfortunately because most civilizations don't build things solid state meaning you know where everybody knows everything do you know how to make a cell phone do you even know anyone that would know how to make a cell phone well even the cars that we have nowadays is not oh. like the cars of old where you can <laughs> actually not that i could but i could if i learned or if i wanted to um work on my car oh, these good days Lord. you can't i mean there's electronic systems going on that oh yeah you you have to just basically uh pull out a whole hunk of the interior in order to fix something and that's only happened in the last 25 30 years 
I mean, beforehand, look, I, I owned several cars where I could change my own headlight without even sweating it because all the, they all use the same freaking headlights. <laughs> now every car has their own individual proprietary thing. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, what I'm, what I'm getting at is we- What you're getting at is, you know what? The old days were pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. No, what I'm saying is we've built a level of technology that is so fragile, that is so is built on a mountain of stained glass. Yes, and if yes. anything brings it down, you are not building it back up anytime soon. And also, we don't uh, we don't have things written down anymore. Th talking about a society oh, built yeah. on stained glass, we wouldn't know how to get from point A to B without our GPS. I know I'm guilty of that. Right. We don't know how many of us. Okay, I'm just speaking generally. Many of us live in cities. We don't grow our own food. We don't know how right. to purify water. Right. We don't know how to. Uh, fill in the blank with the word everything. We don't. We rely on grocery stores. Just imagine if something really bad happened, how soon there'd be rioting in the streets. I mean, I have faith in mankind. I have faith in humanity that we'd end up pulling together in the end. But for a while, it'd be pretty rough. And if you live near the city, and I live in the city, um, you know, after X amount of time, people would be looting at oh, all the even. stores. And then after a little bit longer, they'd be coming to your house and getting what you had, including maybe you. When I wrote my little survival guide, which I give away free to anyone that wants it, you can just email me again at msergeant23 at comcast.net. It's called Empty Shelves. I wrote it. Take It was a thought experiment of what happens when in a very short amount of time, if there is a long-term power outage. It doesn't have to be a meteor or zombies or a plague or anything like that. All it has to do, all you have to do is turn the lights out for, and I, I know that I'm stealing Monsters on Main Street, isn't that the name of the um, The monsters are due on Maple Street, yeah. Maple Street, I always one, get the title wrong, but yeah. Uh, no, it's okay, it's, it's a great it's episode. The same concept. The same concept, which was, in fact, they didn't even turn off the entire block at once, they just did it in stages to where people were pointing at each other. But the point is, is that people get really, because everyone looks out for themselves in the end. Mm -hmm. And you know, you may be best friends with your neighbors, uh, but- But uh, you know, when it comes down to it, your <laughs> neighbor is going to come kill your cat to eat. Uh, well, on, that, on those lines, there's an old, old saying, which is how loyal is a hungry dog? Right. A lot of dogs are loyal up until the end, but there are some that are not. Look. Grandma goes down, cat ate her face. Plain yeah. and simple. You know? um, in the live chat, Zorro, who I've not seen here before, welcome, says, we need a whole new way of life. No more useless jobs and rent and bills, just tending to the needs of the community together. I mean, that is ideal without getting into people living in communes and no individuality and no you know, independent thought. I don't want that at all. But yeah. Hey, I, I've got a comment to somebody. Uh, so Ute in the chat says the best Twilight Zone was the new exhibit, Erg. All right. I have to say, because I know this, I know a lot of media mm -hmm. trivia, mm -hmm. the top three Twilight Zone episodes of all time, objectively. According to you. No, 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 no. This isn't wiki. They, they, oh, people right, have rated right. these over the years. I mean, it's an old series. Okay. Um, the first one was with Burgess Meredith called Time Enough at, at Last. He was the librarian that was in the vault. No, no, he was... He was a bank teller that was in the vault, I think, uh, that w during the apocalypse, he comes up, everybody's dead, and nobody he's not going to get hassled anymore, and so he stacks all these books and all these canned food he's going to read for the rest of his life, and then he breaks his glasses, which which was really sad. Uh, the that monsters are due sad. on May... The what? That it is, is sad. sad. That is sad. It was a twist ending. Um, That's like that story about a woman and a man who loved each other so much they wanted to give each other gifts. It might be called The Gift of the Magi, where the woman had very long hair and she cut off her hair in order to sell it to buy a chain for her husband's pocket watch. But in order to buy her something, a pin for her hair, he sold his pocket watch. Sad, but touching. I did not know that one. Mm -hmm. The the other two, real quick, and I won't describe them. Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. That was actually one of them, one of the top three. And the third one was called It's a Good Life. So there you go. What about Nightmare at 20,000 Feet? That's a great Twilight Zone episode. Uh, with who oh, starred in that? I can't remember, but it came oh out the year God. I was born, 63. Oh. It, was, it was a young Bill Shatner. Oh, wow. Wow. Did Bill he Shatner was the one did that he overact? Went he did. Uh, he did overact. He was the one that went crazy in the plane. And in the movie version, it was done by John Lithgow. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think about it anytime I fly and I'm 
getting ready to fly again tomorrow, I look out of the window, kind of bored, you know. And what, you there's wonder, a giant gremlin on the wing? Yeah, what if there was a person standing out there? What if there was a, I mean, and you're the only one who saw it. You try to tell someone and they said, oh, I didn't see a thing. Yeah. The movie version was actually better. Hmm. It was very, very good. John Lithgow was an amazing. He's good. He, he just lost it better than anyone. I mean, Shatner, of course, you know, he did well. <laughs> Can uh, you do a good Shatner? No, no, nope, not doing a Shatner. Every nope. word is drawn <laughs> out. <laughs> Having a woman do it is not that good, but you get the Spock. point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I want to say hello to Brian Staveley and Ginger Sugarbush905 and Helio Skeptic and Martin Liebke. Hello and hi to Test Vision and Glenn Parent. And uh, we already mentioned you. And hello to Peanuts Clark and Lady Onyx and uh, Devil Spawn Scorpio, who also says yes, 20,000 feet. Uh, Christopher says the best Twilight Zone was the one that predicted Donald Trump with Dennis Hopper. Wow. I don't know that one. I've not seen that one. Well, we got to go look that so, up. Rod Serling was such an amazing writer, and I felt bad because he never thought he was good enough. He you know, Rod Serling slash Rod Sterling. A lot of Mandela Effect people believe the name was Rod Sterling, but I always no, remember no, it was Rod, Rod Sterling. Sterling. No, it, everyone want, they want to say Sterling. I still want to say Sterling. Uh, I had to correct myself many times because who the hell has a name like Sterling? Rod. So, yeah, apparently he does. <laughs> So he was also one of the last hosts that could uh, smoke on television. Remember, oh, right. He always, he always had one. I remember, uh, I think it was a cigarette company called Terryton. They would have magazine advertisements where they drew like a black eye on a person, a woman or oh, a man. Right. And they were holding a cigarette and it would always say, I'd rather fight than switch. So they're promoting violence and smoking. Yeah, that's awesome. Not that smoking is necessarily bad. I'm not a fan of cigarette smoking, but I think if you're smoking natural organic tobacco that you roll yourself, as opposed to those filters, which like immediately probably give you cancer. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not good. And, and honestly, I don't, I didn't mind the, the, what bugged me most about the cigarette thing was that the companies dug in their heels so, so deep and mm -hmm. they just threw so much money. And in the end, the, the irony was they didn't have to because the, the stat that came out later, as you know, I love stats was that 20% of people are hardwired for cigarettes, hardwired. If they smoke once they are in. And that's a massive market. And so what you spent, what, a billion dollars in legal fees trying to, to fight this. And in the end, people, uh, the Dennis Leary line, which I thought was so great from his uh, comedy routine from the early 90s called No Cure for Cancer, where he said, look, he goes, you could make cigarettes in an all black pack with skull and crossbones on the front. Oh, people call, would think it was cool. Oh yeah, call it Certain tubers. People. And there'd still be people lined up. It's like, oh yeah, I'm totally buying these. So yeah. Right. Whatever. Mm. But I'm glad they got them off of television and- um, Well, the TV show Mad Men, um, I was very into that show for a while. I've got all the DVDs um, because I like retro style and fashion and I, I thought it was a very, very intelligently written show. Sure. That's the last time I ever really, well, I watched it on DVD, but that's the last TV stuff I've ever watched, really, for the most part. Anyway, yeah. Mad Men, uh, they, they explored the whole tobacco industry and the advertising industry because Don Draper, the main guy, the star of the, right. John Hamm, the star of the show Mad Men, yeah. uh, worked at an advertising agency. And it was at that point where cigarette companies were, like you said, digging in their heels, trying to say that the cigarettes weren't hurting people. And right. um, yeah, it was a very, very interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, again, it was, uh, the, in fact, a lot of people don't remember that the reason why the class action suit was successful wasn't because of the people it wasn't the people that were smoking it was the healthcare insurance companies they were losing their shirts on all these it lung cancer down to money it always was about the money the the hospitals the the health insurance companies going look you guys are killing us here it's like the people are getting lung cancer and we're having to pay and and you know tobacco is going nope you're not gonna be able to prove it it's like the hell we won't and they got into it, and so it was money versus money. That's how they lo that's how they lost. It wasn't because of the people. The Hori Sheet Show, who's been doing some great flat smacking videos lately, I encourage you to subscribe and watch. Uh, the Hori says that 100% uh, pure tobacco may even be healthy for you, from what he hears. 
course, not not cigarettes per se, but right. look at uh, Native yeah, the the Native American kind. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Flat Accord Music says, "I'm smoking a spirit right now." <laughs> uh oh. There Luke you go. says, "I'm vaping." So smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Um, Jim Carrey, I love you, Philip Morris. That's a that a Gnuli or Newly says that too. Lady Onyx says uh, they smoked nonstop in Mad Men. That was the thing, even when eating, even when giving birth, and, even in the dentist's office. It's true. It's and true. the kind of the great parody movie, which was fairly recent, was uh, Thank You for Smoking. Oh right. Which was about a uh, big tobacco advocate and his life, how he would get into corporations and buy off people and grease as many palms as possible to keep it going. Uh, and and it, you, it was, in the end, of course, an anti-smoking movie, but it, very interesting to see. Somebody's asking Ali Rendon about thumbs down and thumbs up. Yeah, there was a, if you've been watching the live chat, um, which scrolls on the screen after the video makes it to YouTube, there were two flat earthers I'm not going to mention, who um, oftentimes like to cause other people trouble, went and gave massive amounts of thumbs down to this video. Um, we all know who they are. Um, it does not make it any doesn't difference. doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, it's, uh, like I'll just read what Bob of Globebuster said. Ronnie Harris, AKA the Limitless Channel, is the one giving all the thumbs down in this video with his Limitless Sock accounts. What a pathetic loser you are, Ronnie. Karma's real, but hey, what do I know? Hmm. Um, Whiskey Leaks. Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Hi. Whiskey Leaks says, my mom would have a cigarette and then a nitro pill and heart attack every week, started vaping and hasn't had one in six years. Interesting. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Stan Wilder says, I used to work for American brands, American Tobacco, Jurgens Lotion, Spot Nals. I don't know what that is, Wilson Jones Bindery, and that's all one company, corporation, minus about 20 of the other companies. Hmm. So, uh, Dave of all, the channel All People, Free People says, let us all remember to return the favor to Ronnie. <laughs> Funny. Now, now. Well, I, I just I generally it's, ignore. It's, it, ignore. Sorry, it's, it, the, the Bible verse, which is often misquoted, mm -hmm. is do unto others as they do unto you. And that's not how it goes. It is do, do unto, unto others those. how you want them to yes. do unto you. Yes. Otherwise known. And, and I took it a step further in my stuff where I say, treat others better than you treat yourself. Well, Ryan Ertherton says, don't stoop to their level. No. It is um, oftentimes um, compelling, a compelling idea to fantasize about stooping to the level of those who attack you for no reason and lie about you and right. try to besmirch your reputation. But keep it as a fantasy in your mind. The best thing is not to act on it, and you'll always be the better person putting out the good vibes. Take, take the high road. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, unfortunately, lots and lots of people take the low road and doesn't... Well, the low road has got, you know, it's got wagon wheel, uh, uh, like ruts in the in road, and mud and like shoes and half-eaten food. Mm. The high road is beautiful. It's got beautiful flowers and birds. Take that one. More scenic. <laughs> <laughs> and they can take the express elevator to hell. Yeah. <laughs> no lines, no weight. <laughs> and it goes straight down. <laughs> Go. Go or, <laughs> or as Markovsky says in the live chat, turn the other cheek, then pull up your pants. It's funny. It's it pretty smile. funny. Good. Ah, uh, well, I think we've augured another one into the ground. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, not I'll not the you. elevator below, not that ground, but just yeah. I want I mean, to say honestly, to flat fish, by the way, and Twitwit, who just if, showed up. If you're a really cold person, I mean, physically cold, you know, you spend your winters in Minnesota and and northern Canada. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't a hell be a place you, you actually kind of fantasize about in vacationing? Very interesting. Uh, as long no, as you right. had a high SPF, you'd be okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So some quick reminders. Let's recap real fast. 
So in 48 hours from now, you and I are going to be doing a meetup with DITRH in Pasadena, California. A uh, link in the description box for those yep. who want to find the exact address of the park in it's, Los Angeles, where we'll all be with lots of flat earth. There's many you know and many you don't know. And, and, uh, yeah. the, and, the, and by the way, the uh, little documentary thing that these guys are putting together, that we're not doing, it's not a full blown, um, it's not going to be as big as the National Geographic and CBS thing. Oh, we have to also mention Behind the Curve. I hate that title. Oh, my Lord. I forgot about that. But can um, you continue, and we'll get to that right before we close. Get to what? Behind the Curve. Oh, okay. Oh, so do you, you do want me to bring it up now? Yeah, before you after you finish your recap. Right, the recap. Good, well, because I... Good right. thing I'm here to direct the show. I mean, yeah, it's a good thing, right? <laughs> oh, so, um... <laughs> Uh, anyone, so again, we don't have, uh, we're not going to have a competing film teams or anything like that, but there will be people you might be asked if you would like to talk about flat earth. So whether you're a first timer or a veteran, you know, there's going to be people there's, Hey, would you like to talk about flat earth? You know, they want their take about how they got into it mm -hmm. and just some, just some various questions, some generic right. flat earth questions. So, it is not going to be inflammatory. You don't have to worry about that. Right. Uh, and then if anyone has last minute people in Canada, Think about going to the Edmonton conference. That's going to be a week from Saturday. Is that right? A week from Saturday is it's night. Oh, I'm sorry. A week from it's the ninth and tenth, right? So a week from Thursday. It's coming right up. We land. We come back from our trip to Los Angeles, and then we've got a yeah, day yeah, yeah. and a half, so and then we the get on planes. And, it's the ninth and tenth. So yeah, we yeah we turn around, barely have time to watch anything, and then head straight back up to Canada. And if you don't know anything about it, go to fe2018.com. You'll find the information Link there. In the description box. It's going to be incredibly fun. Yep. Also, uh, if you're not able to make it to that one in uh, in Canada, of course, that's in Edmonton, by the way. Edmonton, right. Alberta, Canada. You can go to the Denver one. That's going to be a big one. And the yep. link in the description box is is good for that one too. It's just the link to the to to, to the website that Robbie D's put together. So exactly. And what was the other thing? Uh, I think those brush little... your teeth, floss, get lots of sleep, drink plenty of water. Hugs, not drugs. Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, oh, uh, behind the curve. Behind the curve, the documentary. You can check this out at behindthecurvefilm.com. The documentary Which is uh, not exactly what we thought they were going to make because we didn't know what they were going to make nor what they'd title it until they did. But it turns out it's a glimpse into the private life of several flat, flat earthers Earth. yeah. and mm -hmm. the uh, contrary view that the earth is not flat by science. It's right. interesting and an interesting fun watch. Yeah, it not is. A flat Earth Proofs video, that's for sure. But no, 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 no. Cool. It is not a nuts and bolts documentary. It is about the people of flat earth and it follows um, you, me, Bob, Jaron, um, Chris Pontius, Chris Pontius, and Nathan Thompson. Nathan Thompson, yes. So, and then it goes all the way to the convention. Now, they followed us around for the better part of a year. Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot of, I mean, it's a surprise, considering the shoestring budget it was on, a surprising number of locations. Well, I think that's partially why we didn't know exactly what they were going to do with it. They got so much footage. Right. I think they got all their footage and then dumped it out on the table and said, okay, we're going to come up with a story here. What's the story going to be? Right. I have no idea what their thought process was. I just wish they would have named it something different than behind the curve. But, so I, I know. But, but I had no control I, over that. I, I disagree only because I think it's clever. I think whether it's deliberate or not, de deliberate, deliberate or not, it is a clever Trojan horse, meaning it will. I like in front of the curve better. It'll. Or, my suggestion was the flat earther next door because all of us are really we're someone's neighbor right we are the flat earther next door let's find out what those people are like so i like it that was shot down <laughs> no that's right so they already probably had a title and they weren't telling me oh. hard, hard to say all right so we saw it twice when we were up at the toronto film festival and we caught word, and if anyone's listening to us right now, producers, uh, I would heard heard a rumor that it's going to be going to the Denver Film Festival, even though I haven't seen it online yet. Because mm -hmm. why, how would I know this? Because we have people everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, so look, there's flat earthers all over the place. You don't want to believe it. You don't have to believe it. But we, we do have people everywhere. We're like Spectre. 
And but before that, in September, but without the evil, with, with, without the evil, <laughs> oh, maybe a little evil. Okay. The um, we're also going to be in the Los Angeles Film Festival. That's okay. definitely been announced. And that's and that's already been announced. And you can go there. So anybody in the Los Angeles area in September, the Behind the Curve documentary is going to be in your neck of the woods. So check that out and let us know what you think. Do not bootleg it, <laughs> please. I mean, we personally have no vested interest in if it's bootlegged or not, but I no, think, no, yeah, but the people behind it will take will take it down. So. Well, because it, I mean, after after they found a distributor, oh yeah, bootleg the hell out of it if you want. But uh, until then, you know, they've got to they've got to sell it first. It, you know, I, I don't want to really complain about the title because I mean, it, 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 I just agreed to be in it as did everyone else. We didn't have much to say. We had absolutely nothing to say about the title. However. At this point, since it's already out there, I think it's best to try to give it a positive spin and send it off into the world, you know, with the best of luck, but hopefully it'll get people to look into Flat Earth. There's nothing we can do about it now. There's no sense in calling over will, spilled soy milk. So I will remind people and you that because Patricia and I were there in an audience after that movie was shown. Oh yeah. And what I can tell you is we did not get stoned. In fact, we well, were... Well, you better say that a little differently. We didn't we, have rocks we, thrown we, at us. We didn't have <laughs> Wow. You're absolutely right. You, you know what? You can't use the word stoned anymore, Not can anymore, you? Not anymore, no. No, you can't. So, no, what, we, we were in the audience, and they descended upon us. Yeah, we no. walked into the lobby, and we were each surrounded. We were separated from each other and surrounded yeah. by people eagerly asking us questions about Flat Earth audience members. Exactly. Yeah, we then and no one was they saying were, you're stupid, you're dumb. No, what, no, you, they were genuinely enthusiastic about. It's like, hey, tell us more. Now, part of it was just like the interviews shock, I've done. Shock. Probably. Yeah, they're like, wow. Are you guys real? This is a real thing. <laughs> so and, I think that's the effect it will have on not the flat Earth community because it wasn't made for the flat Earth. Community. No, but it will on Joe Q public and Jane Doe out yep. there. Yep. Anyone who's a globalist, they will have that. You know, it will if it ever gets out there. Remember, look, we've already got re uh, newspaper reviews on this thing. People have seen this in the media, and they've all said the same thing, which is, you know, what it's an interesting look at the people of flat Earth. Whether they would agree with it or not, they thought it was a well-made film, and that it was honest. You know, that it was that it was. Look, it didn't it didn't play favorites. It didn't just say it didn't turn into a flat earth propaganda movie and it didn't turn into a flat earth bashing movie. Right. So neither side is going to be real thrilled, but it's okay because it poked it, fun at you, it poked fun at me, it poked fun at every flat earther. It also yeah. just it it also was was kind to us at the same time. I don't know, you know. Anyway, anyway. I hate the expression it is what it is, but you know what? It does fit in this case. Yes. So there you go. Los Angeles, September. Don't forget. Be there. Be there. Yeah, I know. We'll probably end up going down for it, but I haven't heard from uh, uh, anyone yet. Um, Dan the Water. Yeah, that's right. Let's let's try to go to that. Uh, Dan the Waterman is here, and he is going to be uh, out at the uh, Pasadena um, meetup. And he said, "Don't forget, Mark, to bring your lab coat because Dan the Waterman will be wearing his." And hi to Bipolar Flat Earth as well, and Donald Putnam. Hi, and yep. Papa John Watson. And Dave Hinkle, I think, is here too. So anyway, um, I think that that's our show for the day. Uh, my cats don't know it yet, but they're going to have a cat sitter staying here who arrives tomorrow morning. And um, I think they might like her better than me. So I don't know how that's going to work when I come back. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at the meetup. And then come back, regroup, repack my suitcases, because I always bring two. I know it's crazy. And they're huge, uh, with clothes to go to the the conference in Canada. And um, I'm, I'm super excited for all of this that's coming yeah, it's... in August. August is a big month for those who want to get out, mix and mingle in the flat earth. Yep. It's going to be quite a quite a trip. Yeah. Hey to Zulu one, by the way. Uh, anyway. Mwah. Goodbye. And Mark, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. So it's not goodbye for you and I. It's just farewell. Till we meet again. Hail Hydra. George Clooney. And uh, what else? Hot sex.